Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning friends, I uh, wish you all belated happy independence day uh, and let me, let, let me tell you after the last lecture I had a discussion with my one of my students and he had a complaint. He said that a lot of things are, are being discussed on T by W, thrust to weight ratio but our hangar we are having aircraft which are having propeller and we try to characterize a benchmark a propeller driven IC engine driven propeller engine through power rating. We don't talk about thrust from a propeller driven aircraft. For a jet we definitely talk about thrust. How to handle this? When I ask the same question to myself, I also understand that whenever you talk about motion, we are mapped towards F equal to MA. So if you want to accelerate, if you want to accelerate a given mass, you need a force. So thrust is very near to us, because it's a force, immediately we know what will be the acceleration. But directly from power, when an engine is rated through power, it is not so straightforward. Okay. So I thought I will discuss something on that aspect and try to bring a commonality. Because after all, if somebody, some body has to accelerate, it can be accelerated if it is acted upon by external force. Before I do that, let us see what we were we discussing uh, about thrust to weight ratio and why we are discussing those things. If you recall, we have agreed that this is the basic flight path or basic maneuvers which an airplane will do, it will warm up, take off, climb, cruise, then descend and landing, right. If I see here 0 to 1, which is warm up plus takeoff, when you say takeoff, you need a takeoff speed at which if you can put the aircraft at a desired angle of attack or desired CL closer to CL max, then you should be able to lift off. So I say we lift off which is typically we can write as 1.2 to 1.3 V stall. Okay. Now the question comes, anyway I am starting from U equal to 0 to V equal to V lift off within a specified distance. So as an operator or as a designer, I would like this distance required to ensure the aircraft achieves V lift off within that specified distance is a challenging task because you cannot have very large takeoff distance that goes against the operation because you need, you need large area, large land. Now even at class 10th and 11th knowledge if I write Suppose this airplane is accelerating on ground and there is a thrust and there is a drag, there could be lift and there is a weight and here there is a reaction R. This is very straightforward for you. So what we should write? Thrust which is causing the acceleration and drag which is causing the deceleration 
minus mu of or minus let's say frictional force because as the gentleman tries to move this way there is a friction force this is the net force acting on this aircraft which will cause acceleration i can write this equal to m a because i am assuming that change in mass is negligible and i am also taking a liberty let's say a is average acceleration okay allow me to do that as a designer initial stage we know very well this acceleration is not going to be constant because this drag will go on changing as speed increases because drag is half rho v square s cd means cd not plus k cl square even if i say lift is not that much at the first approximation but i know drag is directly proportional to the square of speed so naturally acceleration also go on changing but i am as a designer initial design stage i'm say okay i'll take the average acceleration and then if i say t by w minus d by w minus ff by w equal to a by g so what is the minimum t by w required if i want to get an assessment that i can easily find out t by w minimum what is that designers uh, trick here you say okay drag is not that large as compared to thrust friction force okay i am neglecting it so that will be proportional to that will cause proportional acceleration which is a by g and you know that within this distance s a will be if i assume a to be an average acceleration a i can find out v square minus u square equal to 2 as so a u is 0 starting from 0 it will be v square by 2s so if i want to design that airplane must take off within a specified distance s then i know that what is the v lift off required from the aerodynamic condition that is given by this so i can easily find out what will be the t by w minimum required it is quite clear i i suppose v lift off is coming typical for cessna type airplane it could be 30 meter per second so 30 square by 2s let's say it is 300 meter suppose i want such a thing then the acceleration required would be or acceleration that will happen would be 900 by 600 and this case 9 by 6 and that is 1.5 meter per second square okay so you, you know that t by w will be now roughly it will be 1.5 by 10 or 9.8 so you know from here what is the t by w required for achieving this mission of s of course because drag and this will be not zero so you can find it Right? You can go on adding those values and see. You get an idea what is required. So that was the essence of T by W. For climb, how as a designer we got the idea? These are all I am discussing. Please understand, for a designer, if your thought process is correct, which is based on the law of physics, then you don't commit too many mistakes. Anyway, designer will commit mistake. Designers will face conflict. all those liabilities uncertainties are there but you as a designer if you are strong in your fundamental then you find you have got enough armament to handle those conflicts and all those mistakes that is why i give more weightage to this before we come to how do i design right for a climb we know t minus d minus w sin gamma equal to m Into a for a steady climb, 
we assume that A is 0. But if you want to climb at an accelerated motion, you know T by W will be equal to roughly 1 by Cl by Cd plus sin gamma plus A by G because M will be W by G. Right. M is, if I, yeah, that's right. Okay. As a designer, Cl by CDO, okay, it is 15 or 13, so I'll put 15. I want to climb at an angle of 10 degree, let us say, so I put it here sin 10. And what sort of acceleration you want, you put that number divided by 9.8. So if you want 5 meter per second square, let's say, then it is 5 by 9.8. So, you will get typical value of T by W required during climb. Understood? But you also understand this at this point that as I am climbing higher and higher, my thrust will go on changing because of altitude effect and because of dynamic thrust for a propeller driven that also will change. All those actions you have to incorporate. Also, you know, W will change because fuel is changing. But when I'm talking about first climb, it will be maybe up to 1,500 feet around that, uh, or for bigger airplane, maybe 1,500 meters. So those are matter of details, right? But this gives you an idea: what is this T by W we are talking about? Why we are spending so much of time, right? Then for cruise, for here, we know that T equal to thrust equal to drag, lift equal to weight. So T by W is equal to 1 by Cl by Cd. So if I am cruising at a best Cl by Cd, that is Cl by Cd maximum, so that thrust required is minimum, then your CL is fixed, CL is under root CD naught by K. But the issue is, your aircraft is not ready, you do not know what is the value of aspect ratio, wing has not been finalized, so how is the number, feel for number. Typically for aircraft, you will find CD naught will be 0 0.021, better aircraft will be 0 0.018, 0 0.017. And for K, since subsonic, I can write pi, aspect ratio into E, it's not a bad choice if you take aspect ratio 8 and E equal to 0 0.7. Not a bad choice. So that gives you an idea what is the CL you are, you need to fly so that you find what is the C L by C D max and you know what is thrust required minimum. But there is a, an issue, you see though, how the conflict comes. Okay, if I have to fly here for thrust required minimum, then I have to fly such that C L by C D is maximum at a given altitude. The altitude for a jet driven airplane long distance will be decided by the SFC of an engine, thrust specific fuel consumption, generally at tropopause, 10 to 11 kilometers where temperature variance is almost negligible, there this, this is very efficient. So any jet driven aircraft will always fight to fly, cruise at that altitude. That is indirectly what I am telling, rho gets fixed. Rho means density of altitude or density of air at that altitude, 10 to 11 kilometer. When you are flying in any such Airbus or Boeing aircraft from Delhi to Bombay, you know, to Chennai, you will find that the pilot in command will announce we are flying at 33,000 feet, right? So that is that altitude that he is talking about. If rho is fixed, the problem is and rho fixed, same time CL is under root CD naught by K, this is fixed. 
So your V becomes fixed to W by S by rho CL. CL is this and rho is fixed here and that speed will come much lower than the speed during cruise you will expect. You want to go faster, right? That is why even at that altitude there will be compromise and it may happen that more weightage is given to that fuel consumption because anyway you have to move faster. The passenger will not like from here to Delhi if you are taking more than one hour people are annoyed, right? So it is not possible that all the time you are flying with these conditions. Right? That is where I was telling you the conflict comes. But T by W you can always find out how much is required once you know C L by C D. It is not necessary you will be flying always at C D C L by C D maximum. Right? So this is the story of T by W and we have given you some numbers for different airplane, but what as a designer you should do if you want to learn this subject based on this based on some mission requirement you try to find out how much should be T by W for a given type of aircraft take Cessna 206, take Piper Saratoga, take a Airbus A320 and apply this and try to see what sort of CL by CD should fly, what sort of T by W the designer must have kept and see actual numbers how they are close. Okay? That is the part of uh, learning to be an designer, to be a designer. Now coming back to that question for a propeller driven aircraft like we have propeller driven aircraft with IC engine backup they are rated as power, horsepower, right? What is that horsepower means? This is your chamber where combustion goes on. This is your brake. Over that you put the propeller. So there is a horsepower, power available at the brake. Now you effectively use that using a propeller. So this becomes power brake and this is power available which is not equal to power at brake. There will be losses that is n into power at break. Your fuel consumption is decided by this gentleman power. Right? How much useful power you are able to get out of this decided by NETA, the propeller efficiency. Okay? Right? So now for a jet driven nomenclature where you talk about thrust loading, natural question comes is there something called power loading. Before coming to that let us understand how do I define, how do I prepare myself to get a understanding how to translate from power to thrust. Okay? And what is this power? This power is required to overcome the drag experienced by the propeller primarily apart from accelerations of the propeller to get a particular RPM. So let us see power loading, how it is conventionally defined, it's horsepower to weight ratio. That is in our mind, like we have thrust to weight ratio. So naturally, we, when you translate thrust to horsepower, our mind will say, what is horsepower to weight ratio? That is the natural question. Keep this in mind and see how in reality how things are defined. That is, you must note that, otherwise you may commit mistakes. So, in actual practice, power loading is defined in a reverse manner, W by horsepower. Notice this, this is important. What mind says T by W, so horsepower to weight, but actually it is defined as W by horsepower, inverse of what comes to our mind when you 
ex just extend the concept of trust weight ratio, right? This is important. You should understand. Typically for airplane, this ratio could be of order of 10 to 15. For the aerobatic, it is 6. What is this 6? This is W by horsepower. This is a typical number. You can get this number for different weight class of airplane. But this you understand, this will have something to do with the weight as well, right? Very, very important thing. That is by W by HP. To answer that question, from horsepower to thrust, how do I draw a mapping? Because I am conditioned. If there is an acceleration, I only think in terms of force. But we are now trying to rate through power rating. Okay. So let us see. This is again from Raymer, a propeller-powered aircraft produces. Thrust, very important statement. So I'm almost verbatim right writing this via propeller, which is no problem. As we have discussed, what it does, this is the brake, which will have a power, brake horsepower. I attach a propeller, and the propeller rotates, it pushes air this direction and it produces a thrust. That is the basic understanding, right? And you can know that when a propeller rotates, it's almost like a wing at an angle of attack. It goes like this. So there is a lift here. You can think like this lift and there is a drag here. And this drag has to be overcome by the power of the motor or whatever mechanism I have got, right? If that is the way I want to perceive, then NP I define as thrust output per horsepower provided by the engine. So, T by W is defined as NP into HP by W, 1 by V, and of course, 550, you know that FPS unit, 550 comes because of horsepower has to be converted into watt in FPS. Why this V has come? You could see that, after all, if it is cruising, power is nothing but force into speed. So, that concept has been used here. And NP into HP is what is the power that has been extracted of, out from the brake, from this brake. How much power has been extracted divided by V because it's moving at a constant speed. That gives me a thrust. And then I divide it by W. So I get T by W. This is the way I perceive. So you could see that T by W is proportional to HP by W. And there is a V sitting here. Okay? So when I am trying to visualize power loading, power loading is not HP by W. Power loading is W by HP. Okay? So reverse of HP by W. So this is way, the way it has been handled in the literature or any manual if you see. This is the way you can perceive if this much is my power loading, which is inverse of this, this is the efficiency, what speed I am moving, then the equivalently I can see that T by W is that, with I am conversant with T by W. So T by W at that speed is this much. When the, the machine was delivering horsepower of HP with a propeller efficiency of NP. That is the understanding. Okay? Fine. So HP by W is inverse of power loading. And typical values, if I give you T by W, when I write T by W, I have now mandated that I should write static. 
at sea level and also I write for different airplane jet trainer which I have given you earlier jet trainer jet fighter and let's say jet transport this value would be t by w would be typically 0.4 here it is jet fighter it has to be more 0 0.9 and jet transport 0 0.25 which is obvious jet fighter has t by w higher because it has to accelerate fast isn't it jet transport is cool it has nothing in a hurry to accelerate and jet trainer of course has to be little more because you have to do so many of maneuvers it has to be taught so you can apply whatever we have discussed and see take a jet trainer aircraft dimensions and see how much t by w you would expect and see how much being utilized right since we are talking about power loading so i will say for power loading category of airplane also will be different because power loading are talking about propeller driven aircraft so you have sail plane you have general aviation airplane let's say twin engine natural question will be general aviation single engine I think I have given you earlier also single engine and then comes turboprop twin turboprop twin turboprop turboprop typical value of HP by W please note that we are talking about HP by W in the manual you'll find HP by W will be prescribed, but HP by W is inverse of power loading. Power loading conventionally is defined as W by HP. So this sort of a mix up is there, so you should be careful. For cell plane, it will be 0 0.04, general aviation twin engine. 0.17 single engine 0 0.07 and twin turbo prop 0.25 so if you see equivalently what is the value for power loading you have to just make sure that you take inverse of it so that will become w by hp which is power loading that will be typically 25 this will be roughly 6 this will be 14 this will be 5 1 by 0.25 is how much 1 by 0.25 is 100 by 6 is 4 but this is 4 twin turbo prop is this value HP by W is typically 0 0.20. So W by HP, the inverse of this is 5. And this is for this airplane, single engine general aviation 0 0.07. So 1 by 0 0.07 will be 100 by 7. So that will be 14, around 14. Is there? Just take the inverse, okay. So as a designer, you will find sometimes numbers are having this magnitude less than one. So immediately you know that typically this is inverse of power loading. Power loading values are generally like this. This sort of a feel you must have, right. You have been noticing that we have completed first exposure to thrust loading and power loading 
and we also know that very important another parameter design parameter is wing loading. So, if you want to design an airplane, you select what is the wing loading required so that all the missions are performed optimally and what is the thrust loading required and what is that combination thrust loading and wing loading that gives you the best result. Because you have seen that thrust loading and wing loading plays important role together for many many performance activities. So, next on time onwards next lecture onward I will be devoting time on wing loading and before we do wing loading we will have some discussion on flaps because flap flaps when they are deflected it changes the C L max value and as the C L max value changes V stall will change and most of the parameters are characterized via V stall. So, next class we will find I will talk about V stall, I will talk about flaps and talk about what is the wing loading required for particular V stall for a given flap configuration. Right? Do not forget when you deflect a flap, you do get higher C L max, but you also get more drag. So, what is that suitable for you? And if you put more complex flaps, the maintenance becomes an issue. How do I handle for what aircraft I select these types of flap? All those things we will be discussing, giving some historical data. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>